Good day, traders, to part two of today's seminar, Strategies for Part-Time Traders and Smaller Accounts. And, of course, you will get a bonus. I hope that you like the first part of presentation. And now we will actually talk about some things that have a lot to common with actual trading. So today I will present you with strategies. And before we do that, I will show you some examples how good money management can be a turning point in actually trading the accounts. So systems that we will use today, we will be, there will be three systems. It's called double MACD strategy. Then there will be another MACD strategy for part-time traders. And the third one is high volatility trading trading that has actually to do a lot with today's markets and with volatility and it's suitable for every single trader type. So it's not just about systems. You also need to define, aside from psychology and system, what, which kind of trader you want to be. So if you want to be a part-time trader, then you should focus on strategies that do not require much time for your trading. If you want to be full-time trader, then you need to know everything. You need to know from scalping, you need to know from scalping to breakout trading, positional trading, and reversal trading or counter trend trading. That is reserved for full-time traders. If you want to be, let's say, a price action trader, then you will focus mostly on, let's say, naked charts with maybe one simple indicator and price action. So, the point is, which di dimension you want to fit in. I personally prefer price action. But because I also create systems that are very unique and systems that are very useful, actually, those my textbook statements are from my personal accounts that I trade with my systems. Actually, those systems that combine price action and indicators can also be very, very good in everyday forex trading. Uh, I have prepared something for you that should suit every trader type. So it should suit a part-time trader. It should also suit traders who are actually involved more deeply in the market. And of course, price action. So three different strategies for our trading today. Before we begin, as always, standard is disclaimer explaining that online educational materials are available by Under Markets Estonia for a global audience. If you want to get corresponding information on charting conditions and any other detail, you should visit undermarketsglobal.com, select your country for residence and contact an appropriate entity. And finally, this risk is for a statement stating all possibilities associated with Forex market. By accepting the risk, you are also proceeding further with me. And here we go. How to trade smaller accounts. So, we talked about psychology. We talked about four horsemen of trading apocalypse. We also talked about uh, what you should do in order to reduce your risk. And now this is a practical example to what we have been talking about today. So, the first example to the left is the sheet that explains what happened to account that risked only 2% of total account per trade. To the right, there is a sheet that, that explains and shows what happened to the account that risks 10% of the total account per trade. So obviously, it has a lot to do with money management. So I can say that out of three most important things in forex trading that are having a good system, having a good, of course, ecology that is connected to money management, uh, money management is simply the most important out of most important things. And it's connected to your trading psychology. Because without having a proper trading mindset, your money management will also be bad. So those are three things. And I call it always the tripod of successful trading. The tripod has three legs. And every single leg needs to be supported. If any of those legs fall, everything will crumble. Everything will fall apart. 
So that is why tripod of successful trading is always the first on your mind. Now, account balance started with losses. Well, you can see that it can happen. Especially if you want to trade every single day, but you don't know the conditions. If you want to trade markets that, are not have, that do, do not have a trend. And why it's important to follow a trend? Because trend is made by big fish. I will talk about it. And it can happen simply if you overtrade or revenge your trade. Here we can see that even if the trading was not that good, the first account that started from 5,000 dropped to 4,169. It's okay. I mean, it's lost. But it's okay. It can be managed. So this account can get back into a normal. But next account, that is exactly the same account, but with other different risk type, cannot be recovered. Or if it's recovered, it will need to have, I don't know, I can say maybe an impossible. Because it will take a long, long, long time to recover it in a normal way. Else you want to gamble. So 60% of the account has been lost. Guys, same thing happened. But two different traders. The first trader traded bad. But well, the risk was great. So it was not much of a loss. But the second trader was actually bad trader with very bad money management. Watch this. From 5,000, it took only 10 losing trades to get it almost to like 1,938. It's, it's like having an account that dropped 60%. It tells us that actually the first account and trader, we can do something out of it. But for second trader, we need to reset him. And I mean reset his trading completely. So we call it from a zero. And yes, you can be from a zero to hero. Don't forget it. It's possible. From a zero to hero, literally. So, in order to do that, for a trader that is a losing trader, the only thing that we can do is completely change his mindset and trading capabilities. How are we going to do that? Well, first explain that everything that we talked about psychology, but also that the best trades are always by following a trend, made by following a trend. So, if you want to follow a trend, you will be a trend follower. And I call it trend is your friend. That is my personal opinion, and I think that I have the right to, to call it trend as a friend, because whenever we follow the big money or big fish, we are actually following the trend. Don't forget that the trend is actually a shark that swims through dangerous waters of forex trading, and you are actually the fish that want, who want to follow the shark and eat the remnants. If you go counter trend or counter the current, situation is that the shark will eat you, probably. That happens usually to traders who don't follow the trend. Counter trend trading is possible. But targets during your counter-trend trading opportunities should be substantially lower. Why am I saying that? Remember the first part of my presentation an hour ago? When I said every trend has a retracement and every trend is trend until a retracement does not become a reversal. Because if you have a trend that is going up and then it starts to retrace. It will probably be, it will probably go up again. But if it starts to drop, breaking some important points, then it's not a trend. It's the change of a trend. And it's called a reversal. 
So for traders who follow the trend, let's say, and follow the money management, even this will be more than impossible. Even the first account to the left side will be an impossible thing because it's hard to make 10 consecutive bad trades, guys. It's hard. I personally cannot... I, I, I don't know if I ever made 10 losing trades in a row since I became a full-time analyst and trader. Simply because that is about your system and your own decision, right? You can have a good money management as the first guy have, has, but the thing is that the system is not good, probably. Something is wrong. So, 10 losing trades in a row is either a system or you are a gambler or you don't want, want to follow the rules. So, something is missing, right? We can change it. We definitely can make it happen that you become a good trader. Literally from a zero to hero, as I said. So, proper risk is always, remember now, long run. I'm not talking about fast running where you can make thousands. You know who, who makes thousands percent of profit? High frequency trading robots. So, you can go to myfixbook.com and you will see a lot of, lot of accounts that are in a huge profit. First of all, high frequency trading can be prohibited because if you do arbitrage, it's not allowed. Because you are uh, uh, ex exploiting the weakness of the system. Basically, what you do is, what robots, arbitrage robots do is, they compare various fees from different brokers and they have that split of a second to open and close the price that has been compared one to another. So, different fees, different prices, and exploit that. That's not correct. That's not trading. So, focus on manual trading, because if you are a good manual trader, you actually can... You, I'm, I'm sure that after some time, your psychology will become also proper. If you're a good manual trader. If, you're, if you use expert advisors or robots to do trades for you, I'm afraid that your psychology will remain the same all the time. Because you won't feel what every trader has felt. And the problem is, if a robot makes a, a loss, you will probably change a robot. Think, will you, will you do something for you by changing expert advisor? No. You're just switching, searching for a holy grail. Holy expert advisor that might give you profitable trades over the long run. But you still don't know anything or you know a little bit about normal trading. I say always, robots are there and expert advisors are there to help us make decisions. But because decisions are made by human factor, and actually there are some robots who can mingle with the decision, it's, it's called algos, they usually correct the price when the price goes out of equilibrium, but it always gets in the normal. Follow that, what I'm saying. Follow me. If the price is going erratic after some news, it will become normal after some time. And it usually happens soon. That is because usually algos correct the price. And still there are human traders who trade big money. So expert advisors who are not doing, which are not doing arbitrage trading and high frequency trading are simply... They need to be changed constantly and adapted to current conditions. I'm not a fan of trading with expert advisors. I enjoy trading manually. So, in, for that occasion, you need to know also the formula for your risk. So, let's say if the stop is 20 pips, we will be using always the, the similar formula. Stop, loss times the leverage you divide that by 100%. Because a product goes first in the hypnation, so we usually uh, make stop loss times the leverage, and that sum is divided by 100%. So in this case, if the stop loss is 20 pips, it's 20 times 5 divided by 100, and that is 1% of a risk. So it always boils down to how much money you will put in a trade. 
how much of volume of lots in MetaTrader four terms? Remember, it doesn't matter if your stop loss is 30 or 100 pips because your risk is fixed. Stop loss should be always dynamic because the market is also dynamic. Stop loss for, for euro dollar cannot be the same or can hardly be the same as the stop loss for pound yen because pound yen, so-called dragon, is moving very fast or pound New Zealand or so-called beast. Fiber or euro dollar is actually, you can usually make something out of it like 30, 35 pips stop loss average. But sometimes you need to either bring it more down or you can, you can lower it. Because market is dynamic. It's not always fixed. Stops can be fixed like say, I will always go with 100 pips of a stop loss, for example. But your risk should always be 1%, 2%. So you can trade with 20 pips of a stop loss or 100. The point is just that initial lot size. So instead of making one lot trade, you make one, 0 0.30, for example. And your stop loss can be widened. So when traders say, I will use stop loss of 30 pips, for me, it doesn't make any sense. As I say, stop loss is a dynamic thing because price is dynamic and it always changes and risk is fixed. So risk should be fixed. Now, how to trade smaller accounts? This is an example of uh, smaller account trading. And usually you will see that scalping is done on 5 and 15 minutes except for some extremes who with, with M1 scalping. Now, risk is, as we said, always based on overall risk per day plus risk per trade. So you need to determine what is your overall risk per day. It should be, in, it should be stated in your trading plan. And what is your risk per trade? So if, let's say that your risk per, per day is 3%. And account is $10,000. So that will make like $300 risk per day. In that $300, actually, you should put something. You should put like three trades, four trades, or maybe a single trade. Stick to this rule, and you will see that your account will be grateful to you. Because if you didn't, if you haven't, uh, haven't defined it in your past, the chance is that you would have probably made some bad trades. I, imagine this. You have a big hump and chunk of chocolate, for example. And you say, I can eat, let's say, two pieces of chocolate per day, and I will stay slim. I won't get any fat belly, right? Because when you eat a lot of chocolate, you will have a fat belly, and we call it love handles, literally. And if you don't stick to that plan, you will be, well, you will look like you eat a lot of sweet. So, the thing is same with trading. If your chunk of the risk, your two pieces of chocolate is 2%, stick to it. In the first example of chocolate, again, your body would be grateful to you. You will look slim. Better, right? But, and in the forex trading, your account will be grateful to you. Because you will always have your account. You, you will not eat it up. Market will not eat it up. Maybe it's, a, it's an odd comparison, comparison. But I think it's, it's the truth. It's always, you, you should always think about things in real life and compare it to Forex trading. Because I said in the beginning, Forex trading is dimension for itself. So, in the example above, we see that 0 0.5 lots seem optimal for scalping the account of 10K. So, for each 10K, we rise our volume trade for 0 0.5. So, watch this table here. If we trade with one lot and 10 pips of a stop loss, that is very, very small stop loss, with 3% of risk, well, it's $100, three trades maximum, right? Well, if you lower your risk, 
to 0.5 lots on $10,000 account, you can make six trades maximum with 10 pips of a stop loss and see if you have 0.5 lots with 15 pips of a stop loss, we have like four trades maximum allowance. You can always think about it. Well, if you don't want to risk 3%, you can go for 2%. It's up to you how much you will risk. I'm, I'm telling you about my own decision and my own training style, but of course you can risk more if you like. You can risk, let's say, if, you're, if the account is low, if it's a very low account, like two or three hundred dollars, well, maybe if you, if you have more money to invest, well, you obviously can make a big risk. Well, let's say starting from 10,000 euros or dollars, this could be an optimal result for scalpers, of course, and for people who actually don't want to make a big stop loss. Let's say that for scalping, Sometimes 15 pips is enough for scalping. For intraday trading, it's usually higher. So this table actually is telling you that you can make good trades and four to five trades if your risk is lower and you won't bring any four of the four horsemen up to you because you will be safe, you will be ready to trade, you will be optimistic. And as we said, you won't be having any problems in anger management. Now, the first strategy that I'm going to show you today is called double MACD strategy, and it's actually MACD strategy for part-time traders and for traders who want to scalp a bit and who want to trade a little bit on different basis. For this example here, we have actually different indicators. So first I will show you the slides and I will show you the rules of this system and uh, then I will show you charts. So actually you will see it on MetaTrader 4. So for this example we use for this strategy we use exponential moving average of 34 and 55. We use stochastic indicator of 8 one three and thirteen one three and both of those stochastics are overlaid on the same chart and we will use MACD two line indicator 34 89 34 settings and of course under market supreme edition hourly pivot points now some of you as I said probably haven't heard about under market supreme edition but uh, let me remind you again that uh, Supreme Edition is uh, an excellent add-on and tool to existing MetaTrader 4 platform and uh, you have hourly pivot points those are pivot points that change per hour and uh, you can use it every single day without no restriction if you have of course uh, account with Admiral Markets also MACD2 line is something that I am fond of because standard MACD, I don't use it that much nowadays. I personally switch to MACD 2 line. And uh, it always gives us both trend and momentum. With using MACD 2 line, you will be able to spot both trend and momentum. While other MACD gives us, like standard MACD, simply shows a trend that is lagging. But it doesn't show momentum. Because it, doesn't la it lacks that s uh, second line that is momentum line on MACD2 line. And exponential moving average in this strategy are for uh, trend. They actually determine the trend. So uh, by using exponential moving average, you will know if the trend is to the downside or to the upside. Hourly pivot points are used for stop loss placement and for actually placing a target price or take profit. Long entries are made when blue EMA is higher than red EMA. Make the blue line is above red line, stochastic is below 20 and pointed upward, and target is hourly pivot point. I will leave you for a couple of seconds if you want to take the snapshot for this screen so you can actually see the rules.
And this is the example of a long trade. You can see clearly that blue line is above red line. You can also see that MACD is bullish. It shows blue histograms. And you see that the logic of this system is to buy lower. Now, let me explain why you should buy lower. If you know what a trend is, and I will tell you, and I'm showing you on the chart, trend is a series of higher highs and higher lows. Like in this example, you have a push or trust, then you have a pullback. Trust, pullback. Trust and pullback. So it's a motion. We call it a zigzag. So whenever you see a zigzag, it means that there is a trend. Now, a lot of people are actually asking me a question that is not clearly defined. They ask me, what is, uh, what is Euro-Dollar trend at the moment, for example? Or any other pair. What is its trend? The answer is, trend exists on every single time frame. So if you open one hour time frame, you will see a trend. If you open monthly time frame, you will see a trend. So trend exists on every single time frame. So the question is, which time frame do you want to watch the pair? If you want to watch the trend on five minutes, open five minutes and find a trend. Simple as that. Well, the magic of this system is it actually captures higher time frame trend and momentum and it translates it to a lower time frame. And that's a good thing because literally you are picking back momentum from higher time frames on a lower time frame. So it means that you will have better entries and profitable targets possibly higher than standard scalping system. A couple of days ago I received a message on Twitter and uh, a guy who trades this system uh, a guy found uh, this system on the internet also uh, on my YouTube presentation but he didn't know that uh, I actually um, had the indicators for this system because those are not standard indicators, right? And he, uh, he said it publicly that he made three good trades with this system. Now, I ask you, would you like to be a profitable trader? And I think that the answer is, well, no, you would. Probably you want to be a profitable trader. Now, this system, I will continue with the explanation, but of course, if you send an email and sign up with Under Markets, Deutsch, German Under Markets, you will be able to, re to get this system for free. And this system was not free because I was selling it back in days. It made a lot of profit and I, I wanted to protect it somehow. And, uh, well, I made some videos and, and such things, so you can get it for free. Um, I invested some time into this and uh, especially about trade management that I will show you with the system. And it actually is very good for people who are ready to take some action in forex trading. So, sign up with Agromarkets Deutsch and your German office will send you all the indicators and templates. And here you can see that these three trades simply on five minute time frame are more than enough to make you a good day. Now remember the first part of the presentation when I said after these three trades successful you will be euphoric, right? So the rule number one is this system is good and it will and can make you over trade. So the rule number one, when you make two or three good trades, stop. Don't trade it. Don't risk the money you earned. Don't let your money get back to the market. Stochastics, to the other side, are down the bottom side of the chart because they will show us the entry. So whenever we see a pullback, this is uptrend example. Whenever we see a pullback to red line, we need to check if the trend is on MACD to the upside. Histograms are blue, so the trend is to the upside. And you see, whenever you see a stochastic cross from 
20, from below 20 to above 20, you are ready to make a trade. So, blue above red, blue make the histogram, stochastic crossing below 20 to the upside, stochastics are trusting to the upside below 20. So here, there is your first entry. Second entry is here. Again, blue above red, blue histograms, and stochastics from below up. So your second, you trade when candle is closed. Your third entry, the same. Blue above red, stochastics are trusting from 20 to above 20, and you can make your trade. Now, you can, of course, in, in Forex trading, you can t trade both ways. So you can also take short entries. Red should be above blue. MACD red line should be above blue line. Stochastic should be above 80 and pointed downwards. And target is hourly pivot point. So here it is. You can see that the first short was initiated when price pulled back to blue or red. So actually, this is the same as the first example. The price should pull back to either blue or red. Ideally, it's to red for longs. And ideally, it's red for shorts. But sometimes, when trend is that strong, price can pull back to a blue and still be a good trade. And you won't see a big difference because you will probably have a signal to enter a trade. So, when price gets back to blue or red and MACD is red and stochastic is above 80, pointing downwards, you should actually be able to place a sell trade. Also for another example, pullback, blue above red, it's sitting, but when you get experience, you will also see that this is a good signal because the trend is to the downside, MACD is down, and you see stochastic, one of them is enough to go from 80 below. Now, let me show you this on a live chart. I will show you this on a live chart. Give me a second here. Yeah. So, here it is. There is, there is Euro dollar M5. And we can actually see the chart. What happens at the now moment, okay, in the market, guys. So, this is what happens in the market in now moment. So, here we can open a mini terminal. Okay, like this. This is the part of Fabian Market Supreme Edition, an excellent add on, so really you can use it. So let's see if we had some trades today. Let's find it. Well, uh, well, actually, here this was a potential trade. This was a potential trade here, but stochastic should have been a little bit inclined to the downside. Still, this, yes, this was a trade setup. Here at this spot, see that was a scalping trade. Here at this spot, actually, when stochastic confirmed it finally, like here, or even here, yeah. You see, red was below 20 and went up. So blue above red, blue MACD, and here you can see that red stochastic went from below 20, pointing upward above 20. Now, where, where are those targets? Well, when you have Admiral Market Supreme Edition, you will actually see a lot of indicators from Admiral Markets. And that is a great thing. Admiral Pivot Points. Here, you go to Admiral Pivot. Check the time frame hourly. And you should actually carry it on your chart. I will show you now. We will move it here. Those are hourly pivot points. So, let's assume that the, it, it was the same, for example, because it shows now moment price, that this pivot point was actually somewhere around here in the past. So, remember guys, these are hourly pivot points. And hourly pivot points change each hour in contrary to daily pivot points which actually change on a daily basis. So here, hourly pivot points, probably they were more or less the same, but let's assume that this was the eventual uh, pivot point. So maximum you could have got for this trade 
was something like, well, even more, guys, because the price is going up now. So you see, if you were patient enough, 30 pips. Now, watch this. You can enter a trade here, and you wait for the price. So you can do a trade management. When the price gets here, let's call it R1, hourly pivot point, you can opt for either to close your trade to get something like, let's see, like 11 pips, or you can move your stop loss actually somewhere below this line. You do it manually. So when you open a trade, you set up a stop loss here and you can move it manually up and down. So you just move your stop loss and you will be enjoying a free ride. As the price breaks through important resistance levels, that is how you move your stop loss. So you move your stop loss, let's say that your stop loss initially was here. I will talk about stop loss placement. So let's say that your stop loss was here. And as the price went up, you move. So the first stop loss was here. Let's assume that the price proceeded up without hitting your profit stop. And you just actually want to move your stop loss here. As the price broke R3, and if you're still in a trade, you move your stop loss there. So that is called profit stopping. So once you do that, you will be stress-free trading. You will enjoy stress-free trading. And you will wait. You will have nothing to lose. Or there is another way. If you made your trade here, per rules, you can actually exit the full amount here. The third example is that you scale out. So let's say that you have traded with 0.5 lots. For you, you place your lots here on our mini terminal. It's very easy. So you just make it like, like the press of the button. Very, very easy. 0 0.5. Stop loss. Number of pips. Target number of pips. Very easy management. So you want actually to scale out. What it means. So instead of taking the whole trade out, you just close 0 0.25. The half of your trade. So when you close the half of your trade, you put your stop loss to break even. So you have uh, secured 0 0.25 lots, and your initial stop loss, that was somewhere here, right? You just move it to your entry position. In that case, you have secured 0 0.25 lots, and you still have 0 0.25 lots running. And if it hits your stop loss, you won't lose anything. You will actually have your 0 0.25 loss secured. And the third and the fourth money management uh, rule or advice is that you actually leave the whole trade, but when the first resistance hits or second, you just move your stop loss to break even. You can do that. I don't do that usually. I usually take some profit. So you can opt to leave your trade running with moving your stop loss to initial position. Plus one, let's say. Just to cover up for a small commission. And that way you are effectively riding a free ride. So, how then we actually trade it? The rules are clear. I already explained it. But where to place a stop loss? Stop loss should be placed below last obvious swing low, but not less than 15 pips. Let's say that 15 pips is something optimal. Sometimes you can say, okay, I will go with 30 pips overall, but you need, as I say, to keep the risk the same. So if you trade with 15 or 30 pips stop loss, it doesn't matter because your risk should be 1%, let's say, per trade or 0.5% of your account per trade. So if you place our trade here, we need to watch where the most obvious stop loss is, but not less than 15 pips. So our trade was, let's say, here. So I would place my stop loss like, let's say, 20 pips. It's like 17, and we will add 2 or 3 pips always. Just 2, 3 to 5 pips maximum below the last low. So we will have like 22 pips of a stop loss. Still, it doesn't matter. You can put 100 people stop loss. But the thing is, 
the risk, again, I will remind you each time on that, should be no more than 1%. So, that is for a uh, long trade. Now, we probably had shorting trade opportunities on pound dollar. And look, guys, how obvious is this? That a pound is going down. Actually, there were long setups here. You can see long, blue above red, blue MACD, stochastic below 20, double stochastic, so it go, they go up, and eventually this was a profitable trade. Wow, 40 pips for a scalping system, not bad, right? Because most of the scalping system systems will give you like 5, 6 pips, 10 pips per trade. Now, a lot of trading opportunities, right? First trade, trade number one. Trade number two. Okay, trade number three. This is discussable, but well, again, it could have been a profitable one, right? And now, watch this. The trend is to the other side. If this stochastic crosses down, we would probably have the price moving down. In the history, we had a lot of shorting opportunities. Watch this, guys. Five minute time frame riding the momentum from higher time frames. Watch this. Obvious trade. And this is a scholastic example of a short trade. Price retracing to red, it crosses, stochastic or crossing 80, to the downside, make this red, and watch this. Bang. Downside. Another hit. A lot of, lot of good trading opportunities. That is why I'm saying, when you make two or three good trades, do not waste your time trying to get more. Because this will make you happy, and you should be able to enjoy the rest of your day. Now, if we get in a short trade, but we need to follow the rules, you see, it still is up. Our stop loss would be, let's say that our short is initiated here, for example. Well, yes, our stop loss should be like 30 pips because this is last most obvious swing low, 26, 27, plus 3 to 5, so 30, 32 pips of a stop loss. And your target should be here, like 45 pips. And you will do the trade management. So if you are in profit, move your stop loss when these pivot points are broken. So when uh, pivot point red, uh, this green, hourly pivot point breaks, you will move your stop loss here. If it proceeds down, then you will, once our S1 breaks, you will move your stop loss here, and so on. That is the idea for your management. But also, if you want to scale out, feel free. It's up to you how you will uh, manage your trade. It will determine your trading style. When trade is going good for you, you can opt maybe to exit the whole position. But as I say, keep your risk intact. Don't mingle with your risk, because your risk will determine eventually and ultimately whether you are in a, a, a good, uh, not good trader, but you are a profitable trader or not. So that is the rules, and if you have any questions about the system, the rules, you can also write directly to me. My email is tarantula at, fx, tarantula fx at gmail com. So, tarantulafx at gmail.com. And you can ask Under Markets German office for a complete set of indicators. And just open the account with Under Germany and you will get it. It's very effective, guys, but don't use its effectiveness to the bad side. And that means don't over trade it. Don't be overwhelmed. If you make two or three good trades, stop. It's enough. Now, the second system that I wanted to show you is actually MACD trading system. It's not double MACD and stochastic like previous, but actually this is a trading system that is suitable for part-time traders, for traders who don't have a lot of time to wait for charts or to wait for things to develop. This trading system is about swings. And you can use it on 15 minutes. I said it's preferred on 15 minutes, but actually it can be used on 4-hour time frame. 
But still, it's good in 15 minutes because it won't give you much signals per day as previous system, but it's still good in its own sense. And it means it still will produce pips, but if you have your day job, so you cannot trade from your office because you are working on your standard day job, maybe you will have the time during the break or during, or maybe you have a free time just to pay small attention to the, to the chart and make a trade. So it's different from the first one. The first one is, as I said, for traders who want to active, actively participate in the market. This one is for traders who don't have the time but still want to make something out of it. Indicators, MACD, EMA 50 high, EMA 50 low, EMA 15 close, and Admiral market field. Now, why EMA 50? Well, back in days, I read a book, and I read a system from Miss Reggie Horner. She is a well-known trader in Forex world. She is one of uh, women traders that I have made a, a blog. You can read my blogs also on admiralmarkets.com, on our global website. I have made a lot of blog posts there. They are informal, educational, and they are funny, so you can read it. And very interesting, I guess. So, actually, Reggie Horner, I mentioned it in one of my blog posts, she made a system called the River. And that system was based on two moving averages, 34 high and 34 low. And uh, by, f by following the flow of the river, traders were actually making pips. So it's a system for itself. And this system is actually is, is using different EMA setting. It uses, instead of 34, it uses 50. And it also has a signal EMA of 15 set to a close that will give you an entry. This system I wanted to make really as simple as possible. One of my paroles are, and quotes are, keep it simple stupid or keep it simple, sir, or K-I-S-S, -S, KISS. Keep it simple. It's simple enough, right? So everyone should be able to make some of it. Look at the rules, and you will see why. Buy if 15 EMA is above 50 EMA channel, and if MACD turn from red to green, sell if 15 EMA is below 50 EMA channel, and if MACD turn from green to red. Stop loss goes 3 to 5 pips below last week low for long trades, and 3 to 5 pips above last week high for short trades. Target is next pivot point or close to it. If the price doesn't go anywhere, you can take a random profit. And this is the example. Very, very simple to you. So, you see, you won't be having a lot of trading opportunities, but it can be actually good because it's suitable for, as I said, traders who trade part-time. So, when MACD turns from green to red, and your signal red line goes above the channel, you open your trade. You see, stop loss goes 3, 5 pips below last week low. So, here guys, stop loss goes 5 pips below this low. Your trade is set here. And your target is, again, I will show you later on the live chart, is Admiral markets not hourly pivot points but because this is a swing system mini da uh, daily swing system you will go with daily pivot points look at this short entry straightforward and one more tip guys don't forget the first part of my webinar always trade systems or I mean always trade pairs that have a good trend that is the primary thing you want to you want to trade when you make a trade. Trend, strong trends. So, let's say that pound yen, the dragon has been the most favored pair for me in the last couple of months because, because it was in, a, and it still is in a trend. It always makes some form of a trend. And I say, repeat it again, trend will and can exist on every single time frame. So, five minutes, 50 minutes, one hour, four hour, weekly and monthly time frame and try to find systems that follow trend use these systems they follow trend 
and try to find pairs that are trending. So here, the short end example, MACD went from green to red, and red EMA crossed below the channel, short entry. And these are pivot points. Same money management as we made for the per system. You can go with scaling in, with scaling out, taking the half of your trade, putting the rest to break even. You can also follow it by moving your profit stop towards pivot points. And you can opt for total break even, like when you are in profit, you place the whole trade in a break even. Or you can close your position close to a pivot point. So this is how it looks on a live chart that I will show you now. So, live chart, okay, here. System number two, you can see here, pound dollar long. Actually, this was a fake out, but you still could have made profits here. Let's see, this was a signal here. So, total of some 15 possible pips. And then here again, a long trade setup. So, a long trade setup. See? Now, short trade setup. So, I didn't pick this, cherry pick this. This is what I see on charts. And so on and so on. So, the main thing is to find a trending pair. You can go with different time frames. You can go, let's say, with four hour time frame. You will not have so many signals, but still, some of the signals can be very, very, very huge. Like this one, for example. Yeah, but the stop losses are big here, guys, so you need really to go with your stop losses. So that is why I say for traders who have small accounts, 15 minutes is different, is definitely the favored time frame. And here, under a market pivot points, we will go with it again. Just give me a moment to pick it up. Okay, Admiral Markets Pivots here. Admiral Pivot here. And you place it the time frame for pivot points D1. It's daily. And here, daily pivots. So these are daily pivots, guys. You can see daily pivots. See, 12 o'clock platform time. And one more thing. Admiral Markets uses calculation for pivot points based on candle closes that corresponds to a candle close of a New York. And actually, this is the best time for platform. Because these candles that Admiral Markets platform shows are actually the best candles to look into. They simply correspond to a New York close. And that is a favored time frame for most of traders. So, that is one more advantage of the platform. And again, you can see clearly today a huge trading opportunity by trading it to the short side. Actually, it happened yesterday. As I said, guys, at the beginning of the webinar, we actually had a short trade opportunity based on my analysis on other markets. So, here see there was a huge drop in the price and that was who made a trade based on on a short of, of a cable it really could make it a trade of the week so I can say that this was definitely for me at least trade of the week and one more thing when you place a stop loss for example just for example you want to take a trade here for example, and where should you place your stop loss? Above this level high. So if this level is very close, like five, six pips from daily pivot point, then make it slightly above daily pivot point, let's say here. Because this will be double resistance. First, it will be resistance from here, then it will be resistance from there. So the chance is that it will not break it. And of course, take that as 1% of the risk. And final part of systems is actually high momentum trading, master candle concept, and we will call it a true breakout. So high momentum trading is, first you need to define what the momentum is. 
in order to go with volatility trading. So the amount, volatility, is the amount of uncertainty or risk involved with the side of changes in a currency exchange rate. That is volatility. If that volatility is followed by momentum, that means you will have a push in the price, usually in the form of a candle. If you see that the candle is going straight to the upside, volatility is high, momentum is to the upside. If you see that volatility is, is going up, but the candle is going straight to the downside, we say volatility is good, high, but we have a downward momentum. And actually, candles can reflect that. So fast change of price during short time, and it's usually magnified by the use of a leverage. Remember, guys, currency trading brings a high degree of volatility, and minor crosses will usually have a higher degree of volatility, for example, pound New Zealand. What is the cause of volatility? Every day is high impact news. So when you see that the news is red or strong or major news, well then, you know that actually that news can move the market. Also rumors. When an important person goes out in front of TV cameras, and start speaking about monetary policy or the change of monetary policy of a possible rate hike or rate cut that may be a rumor that will move the market. Geopolitical events like events that are caused by geopolitical shakeouts, some maybe turbulence in a country, in an important country, it can move the currency that is linked to Macroeconomical news, of course, there is micro and macroeconomic, uh, major and minor economic. When we see a macroeconomical news, it means that the news is probably, uh, it, it has an impact on the whole world or, or the important region, such as European Union or USA or China. Natural disasters, like earthquakes, tornadoes, tsunamis. CB interventions like when central bank intervenes on the open market by buying or selling their reserves to move or stabilize the price, to weaken. Usually, uh, central bank interventions are caused to weaken the currency that is, that is strong. And usually, uh, for example, if you see that yen has been weakened substantially, we can say that might, there might be an intervention of uh, BOJ because uh, it's, no, it's of no one interest to have a strong currency. Let's say Germany, for example. Uh, for Germany, it's not of the interest that Euro uh, is strong, because Germany is the highest and the biggest in exporter in, Europe, in European Union. So if Euro is that strong, it will be bad for importers. So for Germany, of course, lower Euro is better. And that's a normal thing in economy. Also for dollar, no one in USA likes a strong dollar. No one in Japan likes a strong yen, guys. It's not good for a national domestic currency. And profit-taking also. Profit-taking can move the market, can move the volatility, because when you see, usually during Fridays, then prices rapidly moving up and down, Fridays, remember, it's a profit-taking. Profit-taking is when big players and big movers of the market actually close their position. Every single close of a buy position is an automatic buy, in, is an automatic sell into the market. Every single close of a sell position is automatic buy into the market. So that is what you don't see, but your platform does it. So when you close a short, it's an automatic buy. It needs to be matched. Okay? So the thing is, when majority of big players start to, start to actually uh, close their positions, and it happens always on Fridays, you will see that the price usually turns the trend. So when you see that the price went up, for example, watch pound yen last Friday, it went up and suddenly on Friday it went down like a stone. That was the profit taking, guys. And that form of profit taking actually was strong because it turned into a new trend, into a short trend. So watch Fridays especially. Now, advantages of volatility, in order to make money or pips, volatility should be present. 
Volatility will give boost to our entry, turning it into a profitable position. Fast scalping trades are done on a high volatility. Scalp swing trades are done on high volatility. Now you might ask me, what is a scalp swing? Scalp swing is simply something in between scalp and intraday position. It's my term, I have made it up, so you won't be seeing it a lot on the internet, except if you see some of my analysis or something that I have uh, written about, so it's, it's, it's about scalp swing. It's not a scalp, it's not 5, 10 pips, it's not also an intraday like 50 pips trade, but it's like 20, 30 pip trade, it can be a scalp swing. Intraday direct rise to direct fall, when you see the price moving up and moving down, indicated by my Rubozu candle, with that we will learn about it today. Then, momentum trades, so momentum trades are trades that are exploited by huge momentum and good volatility, and reverse positions and breakout trading. Everything is good when we have volatility in the market, guys. Because if you are on the right side, on the right track of the market, you will be able to make pips and the money. Disadvantages of volatility. Bringing up one of the four horsemen. Over trading. Same. When you make money, when you are happy with your daily plan, that is set up by your, uh, system, by your trading plan, stop trading it for that day. Stop trading it because you won't be making anything except for possibly calling out one of the four horsemen. Revenge trading. When you lose, you tend to revenge. Don't do that. Volatility is good, but it can cloud your judgment. So usually what I notice is I, I usually make two or three good trades during London session. And then when New York comes in, if I go at the end of market, it's a losing trade. So I don't do that anymore. So I trade London session, overlap London New York session, and of course I can make a trade if I'm awake during Tokyo session, but I'm not, well, that much awake during Tokyo because I need to wake up and do my work, uh, everyday work, making analysis, trading, helping other traders, making an article, educational stuff and so on, so I cannot, I need to sleep, you, need, you also need to sleep, so well, it depends on the time zone, but if you live in Europe, then definitely you want to trade London and New York session. If you live outside of Europe, let's say, if you live in Asia, then you might try to trade Asia session. That is also volatile, but maybe there will be another time when I will be talking about intramarket correlation between equities and yen pairs that is hugely important. I, won't, I don't have the time for it now, so uh, maybe in the future. And... Definitely, definitely, traders who don't trade, not specifically 20 pairs, but let's say more than 10 pairs can suffer a lot. Because if you, if you trade only one pair, it's not that good. Believe me, you, you can be much better by trading more pairs. But if you want to trade more pairs, you need to learn and think about price action. Right? And the thing is, for trading more than one pair, you need to choose yen pairs. So, for starters, you can trade euro dollar, and also for my systems that I have presented today. So, euro dollar, every single dollar crosses, and of course, major crosses: euro dollar, pound dollar, Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, dollar CAD, and yen crosses. But major yen crosses, such as euro yen, pound yen, uh, New Zealand yen, or the yen. And pay attention now to equities because equities will always follow, uh, I mean, price on Forex will follow equities. Yen pairs are strongly affected by equities. That is why Japanese usually are repa repatriating back their own currency based on movement of Nikkei index during Asian session. Now, high momentum trading that I have developed is, well, actually, Maru, based on Marubozu candles. And I will show what Marubozu candles is. So we usually do it on four hour time, one hour time frame. Recently, I've been also testing it on four hour time frame. And with this, you can trade every single pair that exists in Forex market, of course. Not just majors and minors. This is price action, clear price action, no indicators, except for Fibonacci. 
and Marubozu can, so naked trading. So you can trade whatever you want. And uh, the main thing is that you need to watch for Marubozu candles. Now, when you see the Marubozu candle, draw pip in the candle direction. Entry should be around 61.8, 78.6 or 88.6. Now, watch this. 78.6 and 88.6 do not exist on MetaTrader 4 by default. You need to add it manually. I will show you how to do that. Marubozu candle should have at least 25 pips in itself. And it will usually happen after a breakout of important support resistance level. So scaling in is advised. This is bullish white Marubozu candlestick. It's a strong bullish candle named Marubozu or bullet candle that marks strong buying into support or a resistant breakout. We have white closing Marubozu indicated by a small nose or a wick to the downside. White opening Marubozu indicated by a small wick to the upside and white Marubozu clear Marubozu without any wicks. Bearish black Marubozu candles are either black Marubozu without any wicks Black closing Marubozu with a single week to the upside, and black opening Marubozu with a single week to the downside. So this is how it looks like on the chart. So let's see the first example. It's up momentum and up high volatility trade uh, set up on Australian dollar. We have Marubozu candle. Now, I hope that you know how to draw Fibonacci, because that is... I hope that you have learned so far. If you don't know how to draw Fibonacci, please visit my price action training school. From let's start from lesson number one, adramarkets.com YouTube channel. You can find it there. Everything is recorded, uploaded, and I can I have the class that is pe that is re that was reserved just for Fibonacci, so you can actually see how to properly uh, draw Fibonacci. So. As I said, I will also show you how to add 78 and 88.6. As soon as the price touches 61.8, you can opt for an entry. Your stop loss should be 5 to 10 pips below Marubozu candle. And your profit is based on previous levels of support resistance. You can use also pivot points for that. Or you can do that manually. I will show you. This is a short Marubozu candle. So as soon as the price gets to 61.8, you can enter your short trade and ride the momentum. Now, ideally, your momentum trade setup should happen like from 2 or 1 to 6 to 7 candles after the close of the first Marubozu candle. So you have 6 to 7 hours to have, or let's say ideally I want to have it like 2 hours, but if it's not possible, then sometimes I can wait for 3 to 4 hours it's still volatility because it's a session. You know, London session lasts for a long time, well, from uh, 9 to, uh, to 5. Also, New York session or Tokyo session. So we can, say, wait for one or five, six, seven candles to actually give you a trade setup. Ideally, it's as soon as possible. Same here. Marubozu candle, not the perfect Marubozu, but you see it's a momentum candle. And here, after the close of Marubozu, the second candle gave us the entry. So that is actually, we can see that on a live chart now. And this is, I will show you now how to actually, we need to open a blank template. And here it is. Now, first, how to add Fibonacci levels. If you, for example, go like this, insert. Fibonacci retracement, let's say from this part to this part. You see, it's already set up, but I will show you. So go to objects list, go to Fibo, press edit, and here you will see levels. So to add 78 and 88.6, you need to type here. You won't see this, but you need to press the white uh, background, double click, and it will open with a uh, with this asking you to enter the number, so we just type zero, uh, zero point seven eight six, and here in the description we say seventy eight point six. Also type it down, seventy eight point six, and here eighty eight point six. Same zero point eight zero point eight eight six, 
I forgot to press zero here. And here, 88.6. And you press OK. And close, and you will have it on your chart. This is an example of Marubozu candle, guys. Here I, I incidentally now stumbled upon it. You see, Marubozu candle. Does it have 25 pips in itself? Yeah, 30 pips. So it's qualified for a trade. Watch this. The first candle after it hit 61.8 and it was, it was sold. So you will find a lot of these examples. Here, another Marubozu candle. But I, I don't know if. And also be aware, you don't want to sell if the price was too, too low. So you always wait for retracement. Here, from the top of Marubozu to the bottom of Marubozu, you draw Fibonacci, always like that. From the top to the bottom. So for sell trades, of course, from top to bottom. Of Marubozu candle. And here, 50. So it was not touched. So 61.8 was touched. Well, a lot of candles. But still, you see, it was good. Here it didn't touch. Here we didn't have retracement. So you need to scan for it. Usually you will have some retracement. Here it was enough for some profit. But still it was not that bad. Yeah, 61 and 78. And you see here, it could have been like 25 pips. So you see guys, now the thing is where to take profit. So stop loss should always be placed below Marubozu candle. So stop loss should go 5 to 10 pips below here, this candle. And your targets are. So if you open a trade, let's say that you wanted to open a trade at 61.8. Usually you will wait for next two levels. So your minimum target should be here. If you open a trade here. If you added to your trade at 78.6 by scaling in, your targets could be here. Minimum. Now, what it means. So, let's say that you have 0 0.5 lots to trade. And that accounts for a normal risk, as we already explained. So, you just divide your trade. So, instead of placing 0 0.5 here at 61.8, you can place 0 0.25 at 61.8 and 0 0.25 on 78.6. It can be close 1 or 2 pip. It doesn't need to be perfect touch. Of Fibonacci. It can be like one or two pips away for the, from the price. So that way you can actually wait for your trade to average down in profit. So here you will see the price didn't actually hit 38.2, but because of this trade that you have opened here, you would have been actually in a profit. So you might opt for one close, to break even, full close, or scaling out. It's up to you. But that is how you can manage it. Let's see if we have any other example of Marubozu here. And yes, this is an example of a stop loss hit. Because this Marubozu, actually it was volatility, but here it changed direction. You see, it, it changed immediately. Usually, guys, if you're stopped out after a, a momentum candle, uh, you, you can be 70 to 80% sure that it will be the change of a trend. Because if this volatility candle didn't manage to give you profit, you see there was a huge trend change. Usually it will give you, but sometimes when trend is about to change, well, it doesn't help. Uh, we really need to, to find some other potential examples. Those are, well, yeah, this could have been, but this is not Marubozu. It has, we should find, you see, this is a good Marubozu, this one, but unfortunately it didn't have a pullback. So this one was good. This is Marubozu, okay, here. But did it have 25 pips? It was good, rejection from both 61 and 78. But did it have 25 pips? Yes, 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 40 pips. So good. You see, that is how you do it. So for profit targets, your first profit target, if you open a trade at 61.8, would be here. If you add it at 78.6, it should be here. But if you see that momentum is strong and it still proceeds down, just move your stop loss, your initial stop loss here. Move it as soon as you see the candles are breaking down. Just move your stop loss. Move it. You can use also Admiral Markets pivot points, daily pivots for this because it's one hour time frame. 
and you can move as the previous examples showed you. So, same guys, if you have any questions, you can ask me. And finally, we come to the last part of this seminar price section. It's called Master Candle. So, Master Candle Breakout. And it's also a form of, a, of trading naked. So, Master Candle is interim support and resistance. A candle's high and low, which engulfs next four candles high and low, that is called a master candle. It's called true breakout concept because it has price action filters that it will keep you away from making bad decisions. It's solely done on one hour time frame. This is, well, it doesn't look so well on this picture, but I will explain and show on a better picture. When you see the candle that has uh, four consecutive candles inside it, like this, then it qualifies for, for a master candle. That means that this is a mother candle that keeps all these candles aligned. That is interim support and resistance. So first you need to define master candle, and the first, second, third, and fourth candle within the master candle are called setup candles. First, second, and third candle after the fourth setup candle need to break master candle higher low for the breakout to, to be valid. So, 5th, 6th, and 7th candle after master candle are entry. Valid master candle has 40 to 100 pips range, but sometimes as low as 30, depending on the pair traded. Buy sell entries place 3 pips plus spread above below master candle high or low. Use next support resistance for TP. You can use either Marcus daily pivots and no trading either price is close to support support resistance level. So, this is very simple. This is master candle. You see, it has 70 pips. The first, second, third, and fourth candle within the master candle are exactly defined this to be a valid candle. So we don't want to make bias for trading. We don't know where a price will break, but we will follow the price. So if the first, second, or third candle, so these three, make a break two or three pips below and spread below the, uh, the, the master candle low, we make for a short trade. This candle actually was initiated here. It broke like two or three pips. Three pips it was the breakout of this low, and this was a trade. Put your stop loss here and wait. And you see what happened. Next candle here. See? Price has made a master candle. One, two, three, four. Second candle broke above it. And watch what happened. Bang! To the upside. Next example, master candle 40 pips, first, second, third, fourth candle inside it, and the second candle broke to the upside. So you should be able to find these setups, guys, on your chart. Now, if you are hard to find it, you can always open live chart and scan it to see if there was a master candle somewhere on a time frame. Let's find one here, guys. Oh, this is great. We didn't have, oh, this is the best I could ever imagine for this presentation. I watched this, Master Candle. First, second, third. Well, the only thing is, it, it needed to have four candles inside it. So if it had four candles inside it, next three candles, one of them should break below. So there was no setup here. And let's see, maybe we will find, but this was a great, great candle. Here, Master Candle had no volatility too. One, two, three, four, five. Great. Actually, no, this was not one, two, three, four. And the second one, yeah, this was a breakout exactly from this spot. This was a master candle. One, two, three, four candles trapped inside. And the second candle broke, but actually didn't produce much of a profit, but still, it's a breakout. So, 13 possible pips. Not that much. But, guys, here, you had a very strong support here. So, this is what I, what I was saying. If you are close to important support, don't trade it. Maybe you could have made 10, 15 pips, but it's not much. Because, you see, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times bottom. You don't want to trade 6 times bottom here. You see, it, it's, it's not coincidence that it rejected. But still, it was good for some pips. Okay, here, 1, 2, 3, 4. No, this was not... So just scan through this as I showed, and you will be able to find some of these trapped inside. One, two, three, four. Here, master candle, but 
here it is. Mm, this high broken, so it's not a master uh, kill. One, two, three, four. And yeah, here, same again. One, two, three, four. Yes, this was a good master candle. Sometimes when you see that it made a double bottom like this, well, it can be ignored because double bottoms are not the real breakout. So one, two, three, four. And next candle, you see here, actually, this was a good breakout. So when you're familiar with this kind of concept, you can actually treat this also as the master candle. You see one, two, three, four. Actually, this four was a little bit down, but it was more than logical and more than obvious that this will break to the downside. And you see, it's a breakout trade. So it passed, hit, and run 45 possible pips. So any questions are welcome. If you have any, everything that we have talked about, you can get from, info, if you write to info at admiralmarkets.de to get free templates and dedicated for this to strategies. Okay, guys, so I hope that you enjoyed. This, this is the address of official Admiral Market Germany rep representatives here and the office. And this is the contact information. Um, again, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this three hour presentation. My name is Nenad, known as Tarantula. I'm a trader as you, an analyst, and I will be always there to, there to help you. I wish you a great day, a great week. And trade well. Cheers and bye for now.